psychics, uh, people who say that they can communicate with the dead, because we all know we can all talk to the dead, right? It's just that they don't want to talk back. So, um, we, <laughs> Greek vampires have been my passion for as long as I can remember, and I don't even know why, but I started with Sylvia Brown, and uh, she has a uh, thing, well, anyway. So she's no longer a thing anymore, but I own my talks on her. So, so I've really been interested in this a very long time. And what I'm going to tell you is a story about how I've used um, the community and how I have used um, Wikipedia and I've used the, the uh, bloggers in our community to, to try to do something. And so this is the story of Operation Tater Tot. And I've done three official um, investigations of sorts. They have had various roles, not necessarily the most successful, but sometimes you can't tell how successful they are until maybe time goes on. Maybe you have to hope that the media picks it up. And uh, with the creative names that we have, I think that maybe they will get picked up. So I have included right here, I don't know if you want to take a picture of it, but. Um, Operation Bumblebee is the first one I did. It was a double blind um, using Facebook, uh, trying to catch a hot read for a psychic in the United States called Chip Coffee, who is, in my opinion, a um, abuser of children because he had a show that was quite popular, popular, however that is, um, called Psychic Kids, and um, that was it was really egregious. But anyway, so that was one I did in 2013, I believe. And then right after that, we were, did a smaller one that also was a double blind. This is really hard to do, and I'm really proud of us for thinking it through um, how to do this. I had a team of people. This is all my idea, so if there's any lawsuits or anything that need to be filed, it's all my blame. But um, I did have, I can only do these with other people. And the second one was called Operation Ice Cream Cone. You can Google these. Along Operation Bumblebee, if you Google that, you're going to get a, I think it's a, a submarine something. <laughs> so put Operation Bumblebee Gerbic, and then you'll find that I have written about that ex extensively and Operation Ice Cream Cone, as well as Operation Tater Tot. There are at least three articles, or if not more, um, that are um, explained this in a lot more detail than I'm going to give you this morning. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, you know, when you got some Wi-Fi and you're waiting somewhere, you might want to read through these things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about, or you can take a picture of this slide too, but um, it's all. The, the, what I'm going to talk about is this, this person whose name is Tyler Henry. And Tyler Henry is a no-named psychic. He is literally no one. He was a, he's 20 years old, and Hollywood was looking for a, a reality show with a psychic. So they, I don't know if they did a Craigslist or what they did, but they, they, they got this guy. He was, they were looking for a Hollywood, it was going to be a show called Teen Hollywood, or Teen, Teen Psychic or something. But he was 20, so they had to call him you know, older. So he's Hollywood medium. And I found out about him in January of this 2016, because somebody on the um, reading about my skeptic camp um, uh, got in contact with me. Somebody who doesn't have, really use the internet, she doesn't use the uh, YouTube, and she called me on the phone, believe it or not, and, um, and she says, I don't know, I keep seeing this, these promos for this guy Tyler Henry and on the, on the e-network, which is a, like a, how do you say, it's just a junky kind of channel of e, like in entertainment. But she says, they say he's the real deal, and I don't know much about that, but I see in the paper, because I had an article in the paper that says you're a skeptic, and I kind of want to know what's going on with that. And I said, I'll look into it. So I did. I sat down and I wrote an article um, watching one of his shows, and you guys are all come, uh, familiar with the terms hot reading and cold reading. I hope, okay, hot reading means you have information uh, of some sort, and cold reading means that it's just you're playing the average, just throwing things out. and. Um, so I'm going to assume you guys already have all this because it'll take too much time for me to explain how all psychics do this. And I can explain in detail when I sit down and talk to you. So I write for Skeptical Inquirer. Um, sometimes I'm in the magazine, but more often than not, I'm actually in the online version. So I like to be in the online version because what I 
what I write goes up. I can write a long thing, whereas the print, you know, you have to wait like three months. And, and the online thing, I can put links and stuff like that so people can link to it. So well, I wrote this article, and don't be reading it right in front of me now. This is called Grief Vampires Don't Come Out Only at Night. And this article I gave to Skeptical Inquirer um, online. And it is basically me learning who Tyler Henry is and writing it as I'm learning. I'm just watching, I'm reading his website, I'm looking at his, um, his Facebook feed, his Twitter feed, and the videos that I can find on it. He is, like I said, he's, he just came out of nowhere. He was some guy doing psychic readings at a psychic shop in some little tiny town somewhere. That's all I could find. You know, he really had no history. So as I'm reading through this, I'm trying to decide, is this a wink, wink, nod, nod psychic? Or is this a psychic who believes um, what he's doing is real? And uh, I found out that, in my opinion, see, I have to use all those disclaimers, he is a uh, person doing it for profit. Um, he's got a good gig. He's got a TV show. He's 20 years old. He's, uh, and I'm reading through it, and I'm thinking, OK, is this just kind of like you know a psychic that does you know at the fair or something? Nothing really dangerous, and you know, it's all done in entertainment, you know, we know. Well, as I go through, I find out that he wants to, his, his greatest ambition is to counsel parents who've lost their children to suicide. And I'm going, oh no, oh no, 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 no. I'm going to do what I can to take you down, because I, that's not okay. So in my mind, what I'm thinking is, I don't know who this guy is. And I've been doing this for a while, and he's not on my radar. And all of a this is commercials coming up on this E channel. You know, this, the, the Kardashians are on it. You guys know who those people are, right? They're, you know, you see them in the tabloids and stuff. They're just tabloid people and stuff. They're like the B and C and D list of celebrities, in my opinion. Because I'm recording this and you guys are recording this. Because so, I know you guys be cool with that. But so I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm writing this article. He is not what I would call somebody that. I think really should be let loose on society because he's, um, I find it dangerous, you know, talking to people's children and saying that, or any of that, I find that just, just dangerous. So I, um, I got all the way through the article, I wrote it, I said I'm going to send this off to Skeptical Inquirer, and then I started thinking, well how can I just kind of maximize this and make this into something bigger? And I thought, well if I don't know who he is, then nobody probably knows who he is. So this is a unique opportunity I have to get an article out that's critical of him. And I didn't use any ad hominems. I didn't call him anything nasty or anything like that. I just was stating the facts and why this is an entertainment, and why it's not funny, and why it shouldn't be on an entertainment network anyway. It's just, you know, uh, and what he's, what he's doing is harmful and why. So I was being very you know, diplomatic about how I wrote it. And I, my thought was, what if when people see him on the media, you know, they're watching his promos or whatever, like this woman who had called me, if they Googled him, what are they going to find? Well, there's no Wikipedia page. He's not even had his first show yet. Um, they just started announcing like a week later. I thought, well, how can I get this article that I just wrote to move up in the Google rankings so that when people Google Tyler Henry or they Google Hollywood Medium or Psychic uh, Tyler Henry, how what are they going to see? So I found that what they would find is his Facebook page, which had, you know, 20,000 likes or something. So he was just barely starting out. His Twitter account, his website. And then all this, <coughs> um, these other articles came out about him being, um, this uh, from E Network, and then I guess E Network had contacted their affiliates, so it was all entertainment kind of stuff. So it was like, oh, he's young and he's gay and he's adorable. Isn't he the sweetest thing? You know, it's just, you know, puppies and kittens and rainbows. And, oh, it's so cool. He's just the cutest little thing, you know. Look at his smile and everything. Yeah, anyway, so that's all I could find. So I thought, I'm going to write this critical article, I'm going to put it up on Skeptical Inquirer online so that it can be accessed so it'll move up in the Google rankings, not something print. But how can I make it go up higher? So I contacted a friend of mine named uh, Tim Farley. You may or may not know who he is, but he's part of the inspiration for me starting. I see if you nods. Yes, Tim, they know you. Yeah, yeah. The whole audience, they're all raising their hands. Yeah. 
So he has a website called What's the Harm? And he's kind of a te tech guy. And, and uh, so I said, Tim, what should I do? He says, well, you know, there's people write books on how to get your thing moved up in the Google rankings. But the best thing you can do is if you can get other people to write articles and then include a URL to the article that you want to move up. And so those hits will help move it up. And I said, awesome. That's something I can do. Uh, let me pull in some favors. So enter the We Got Your Wiki Back project. So what I did is I contacted everybody I could think of in the skeptical world who knew about vampires, you know, the, the, the psychics and stuff like that, and who I knew were on the same path as I was on mentally, and who had popular blogs. Because I needed them to write an article, and then have them link to my article, and then we needed to flood Google by using social media as much as we possibly could. You know, Facebook, Twitter, all, everything we could think of to get the articles out. And I only had maybe a week, because he was going to appear on Dr. Phil. You know who Dr. Phil is? Ooh, the bane of the bane, you know. He's one of the biggest skeptics, would you believe it or not? So here he is. He's posting. He look at that smile. I mean, isn't he the cutest? Don't you want to just go for this little cheek? But, oh, did I hit something? Hold on. I, I hit something. Is my audio okay still? Because I hit something. You know, it's whatever. So he, he's posting that this is going to be on the doctor. He's going to be on Dr. Phil. This is January 12th. See? I don't know if you can see it from there. So. Um, things are starting to get hot and heavy. I'm going, God, if he hits Dr. Phil and I don't have some kind of article out, this is not going to work because that's the day, really, when the people are going to go, who's this psychic? Who's this new psychic? Isn't he cute? You know, And I need them to be able to hit something. So I wrote to all my these people, and I said, I'm going to do this, and are you? will you help me? And they said, they said, you know, I'll try to, I'll see if I can get something out. You know, we're really, these are busy people. So I said, all right, I, I'm giving you a heads up that my article with Skeptical Inquirer has not published yet. When it publishes, then I'm going to give you the URL because it has to go into their article, right? You guys follow me, okay? So then here comes, um, I called in all these favors and every one of the people that I asked except for one responded and they were awesome. And, this is uh, Jerry Coyne who writes Evolution, uh, Why Evolution is True. He is a, a, writes environmental, uh, he's a biologist, environmental biologist, uh, whatever, you know what he is. But anyway, he's an awesome guy who wrote his, rewrote his Wikipedia page, a really neat guy. This is a Neurologica, Steve Novella, oh my gosh, he just sat down and wrote like, like pages on this title. And they, they all wanted to, not only did they just they didn't just write an article, they went into detail and they were doing research and they found out things that I hadn't found out. Stephen Novella, a neuro Neurologica, very popular blog. Doubtful News, this is Sharon Hill's site and she just came out with a podcast, also Doubtful News, and she wrote an article for me as well. And then down here, Science Blogs, this is David Gorski, ORAC, one of the other people that we mentioned um, yesterday. He wrote an article. He says, I do not have time to do this. Absolutely don't. But then, all of a sudden, here comes this article. I'm like, yay. Um, all mentioning my article. Friendly Atheist, uh, him at Metha. Um, if you don't follow him, he's, he's another awesome person. And then Skeptoid, a very, very good friend of mine, did, uh, Brian Dunning. He, uh, they have a blog. It's not as popular as their, their podcast. It's extremely popular. But one of his editors, uh, one of his writers, I'm like, oh, I can't say it at the second. Um, his name on there, but um, he, they wrote an article for me too, and it's Susan Gerbic, Vampire Slayer. And uh, let's see, The Rise of a New Grief Vampire, Real Deal, Boy Next Door Medium, or Hollywood Hype. This one's also mentioned Grief Vampire, Grief Vampire. I'm trying to get the name Grief Vampire associated with um, uh, this kind of psychic. And down here on the other side, this is a somebody I didn't ask for, but he saw what we were doing and posting on Facebook, so he got involved. Great Plains Skeptic, and he wrote a, an article. And then on this side, this is not the Huffington Post. This is another article by Malign Skeptics, who I also didn't ask, but they they sent an article out there too, disregarding Henry psych, Psychic. So. These people all came out with their blogs. They came out with them within like three days.
piece of, of uh, within two days, right before the um, um, the show went up for um, Dr. Phil. And then the next day, or, or two days later, his show premiered on, on uh, E! Network. So, I'm like, awesome, let's see what happens. So we're clearing our cache on our computer so that we, you know, and then we're Googling Tyler Henry to see what comes out. And people all over on Facebook are doing this, and, and we're trying to see what uh, what pulls up, and we were, you know, people are, we're, so-and-so is at, like, ranking number four, you know, and we're just hitting all over these different places, so we were getting up there in the Google rankings, and it wasn't my article, which was interesting, it was Sharon Hills, I believe, was getting the most, and I think him at Metho was getting a, a bunch, too, they both have a, a, quite a readership, but, um, you know, in the articles, and what we were trying to do is tell people, share this like crazy, so that we can get it somewhere, we're hoping the, the media would get interested, too because, um, you know, that's the way it is. So the story of Tyler Henry, you can read about that later. I'm going to continue with my story of what we did. So I thought, should I write a Wikipedia page for this person? Because I'm going back and forth. Do I want to give him the notoriety of having the prominence of having a Wikipedia page? You know, I personally couldn't have written it because I was the, his biggest critic. And I'm going back and forth and back and forth, and then the next thing I know, Somebody else, who I do not know, wrote a Wikipedia page for him. Somebody, I have no idea who this is. But I can tell it's, it must have been somebody from the skeptic world because my article was kind of the, the thing that kind of started him off. But he's definitely notable because he's got a TV show, he's got all these people writing about him, and then he's got a critic that's writing about him. And not only a critic, I'm a notable critic. That means it's, I have a Wikipedia page. So I can be published on Wikipedia as an opinion if I write in a notable place, which is another place like Skeptical Inquiry is notable. So it's like this, you know, once you can get this Wikipedia page, you know, anyway, I'm using it to my full advantage, put it that way. So people went in and they added a criticism section. I don't expect you to read this here, obviously, but look how big that is. The lead on the, on the Tyler Henry Wikipedia page is only about two or three sentences. This is the body, it's the criticism section. And again, you can see all these places where they're hyperlinked, and mine's the first one on there. So since I'm not really famous or anything like that, I was kind of a control, because as I had a Wikipedia page, and I don't really do anything that's gonna get in the media's eye, I only speak to skeptics. I don't, I'm not in the public side, pretty much. So we can see that I usually have a baseline on my Wikipedia views. So we can tell that if people are accessing the Susan Gerbic Wikipedia page, it's probably because of this. Because there's nothing else that I'm doing. So, um, we got a lot of criticism on here. All constructive criticism, no ad hominems, at least not out of my mouth. And then, um, this little section right here is a, another article that I followed up on a few months later, where I actually watched one of his shows and I could see how he's doing his thing. And it's a little different than the rest of the Greek vampires. So then Jezebel got involved, and this is kind of a slam site. It's you know it's a gossipy site kind of thing, and they were saying you know ad hominem kind of stuff. Twenty year old bullshits his way into the homes of celebrities and his worst show on TV. I have nothing to do with this. This is some somebody else. But this starts hitting the media, and he starts getting some some um, some interest in it. And it's like I say, it's not my style because it's really like an attack and I don't go for that but you know it's pulling things up. Then um, I wrote another article. This is Return of the Grief Vampire which is going back, uh, it's August because the show's already down, it's done, but it looks like it's going to run another season so I wrote another article and um, this is me reviewing, um, uh, talking about the statistics that I'm going to give you in a couple minutes and then Here's the Bobby Finger, that was the Jezebel thing. We added that to the Wikipedia page, or somebody added it to the Wikipedia page. And that got on there. Let me see. And then, lastly, almost lastly. So uh, then I wrote another article um, recently with, um, where I watched one of his shows. Because Bobby Finger, that's the guy from Jezebel, he said, that he felt that he was hot reading, that Tyler Henry was getting his information. There, he's, he's interviewing celebrities. 
He says, I don't know anything about celebrities. I don't know anything. I never watch TV. And I'm like, you're 20 years old. You know, come on, of course you're watching TV. I'm sure you know who these celebrities are. Especially now you're into it like nine months. Of course you know. And they're all e-network kind of celebrities. So, so they were pointing out things saying that they think he's hot reading. And then so I said, hey, he's hot reading now? That's interesting because the first time when I looked into this in January, he was cold reading. And so I went back and I watched the same show that they watched and it's pure cold reading. There's no hits, absolutely zero hits throughout any of the things I've seen. But what it is is people are misremembering. It's an emotional thing to be sitting down and having yourself, um, somebody you know, holding your, your family's ring and they're talking to your dead loved one and you kind of don't really know what's going on. It's really painful, it's, it's a powerful thing. And then the camera's turning you right afterwards and they say, what'd you think? You don't have time to react, you know. You're like, well, he got my mom, and he and he knew my sister had died, and, and and all this. But then you rewind. We have the power of pause, rewind, pause, rewind. I'm like, no, he didn't. He didn't say he got a hold of your mom. He said he got a hold of an older female figure. <laughs> you know, and he didn't say it was your sister. No, you said it was your sister. You know, and so in the moment. They're giving this information that it was all accurate. Oh my gosh, he hit, he knew my dog. It's like, no, he said he saw a dog near you. He didn't say it was your dog. He didn't say what kind of dog. He didn't say the dog's name. He just said a dog. He didn't say the dead dog was dead or alive. He just said a dog. So that's not a dog near you, but they misremember it. So you have to have a little bit of, you know, we have the benefit of going back and looking, whereas they're in the moment. Also, they're celebrities. This is giving them all sorts of attention. If they came out and the celebrity said, you know, I didn't get anything right, do you think it's going to make the show? No, because they have to have ratings. They're going to show the very, very, very best parts of the show. And so, as I said, there's no hits. There's nothing. But it's carefully edited. The real magician is the editor. So it's carefully edited down, and the best stuff's on there. And if he had gotten a good hit, it would be on the show, and there was nothing there. So I think he's still cold reading. He has this thing, what he does is he says, um, he throws something out, some general statement, you know, I'm seeing a fishing, fishing something like, <laughs> he's fishing. So <laughs> a fishing like water, like a boat. Does that apply to somebody you know? <laughs> and there's this awkward silence and we're humans we want, to, we want the person to succeed you know we want this to go well and he just pauses and he smiles and, he, and then they say well my father fished <laughs> hi you know I'm getting that yeah. he says, and he you know we used to go fishing when we were kids yes I'm getting that too so he's got this unique thing. I don't know if it's because he's new or and he's uh, young and he hasn't learned that most cold reading vamp grief vampires throw out tons of hits. It's called the law of averages, and and a large large numbers law of large law of large numbers. And they throw out things to the audience that if it doesn't apply to you. It applies to you. Oh no, I'm, it must be you. Oh, is it you? You're nodding. Okay, so it must be you. Is it your mom? Okay, it's your mom. Not your oh, not your mom. Oh, it's next to you. Okay, yeah. So they throw out constantly. They're constantly hitting. They throw out tons of statements. So um, he is doing this thing, and I think it's really kind of clever, is that um, it's this long pause, and that awkward silence. You kind of want him to succeed, so you kind of fill in the details. And I think that's quite clever, actually. So let's go to stats, right? Everybody likes the stats? Here we go. This is Tyler Henry's Wikipedia page views. You can see large masses here, large masses there. What do you think that means? Seasons. Seasons, right, exactly. And the big hits are the days that it airs. So what does that tell us? People, come on, it's Sunday, you can do this. What does that tell us? People are watching the show and Googling him, right? And the first hits they're getting are a Wikipedia page because that's, it's ranking, it's like Wikipedia, um, his website, his Twitter account, and um, like his network's uh, promo for him or something. So it's like four view, four of the most, and they just keep rotating. And the articles I wrote are, and the other people wrote are probably like on page three or four. Sometimes they appear on page one, but like maybe 
uh, number eight or something like that. So somebody would have to really go down to look at them. So the best place people are going to get the information is Wikipedia, not necessarily even the most popular blogs that we write in our community, which are important, but they're not what's, that's not getting beyond the choir enough. And I think this is going to show that. So this is Tyler Henry, it's a Wikipedia page. Um, these are huge numbers. This is 14,000. So he's got a lot of people looking at it. I, wrote, I um, made this slide in October, but as to date, his Wikipedia page has had 700,000 views. Okay, that's a lot, but it is not enough for somebody who really is speaking to the dead. You think that if you're communicating with the dead, 700,000, I mean, you would have 700,000 a day. I mean, that's crazy, but so he's just so, you know. Here's the Wikipedia page views for Susan Gerbic. Now, I know it looks like a lot, but it's not. I mean, there's 400, up in there, those are 400 views. So you can see kind of the same trend, right? Here's this big number, here's the other big thing, and then there's this low level right in here in the middle. So that, again, it means that they're, they're probably not Googling me because I haven't done anything that would be Googleable unless I'm speaking at a conference. But what they're doing is they're going to the Wikipedia page for Tyler Henry, and bless them, they're hitting the criticism section. It's not a lot, but they must be at least interested enough to go, who's this Susan Gerbic who's criticizing this sweet little guy? <laughs> he's so cute, he appears with puppies, and they pick his face, and he's so cute. Um, now, I can't, I don't know if you can see it from here. I'll show you this in a second. But this is the first article I wrote. And then in August, I wrote another article, and then I wrote another article. So you can see how the page views, the criticism section grew on the Wikipedia page. So you can see how the views have actually increased. Now, this chart I'm going to show you next, and I just want to explain it really quick. This is, uh, what's it called, Trunca truncated? So this is the Susan Gerbic Wikipedia page views. This is the Tyler Henry. They really aren't that close. It's just the, to put it on a graph, they, these, these are in the... 10,000, 5,000, and these are in the hundreds. So it's just to put it on one single graph so you can see it. But this is logarithmic. Hmm? logarithmic. Logarithmic, thank you. So um, I want to point one thing out, this little yeah. thing right here, and then I want to show you how every time, I just drew this on here um, so that you could kind of see it visually how it, it is exactly the same here and here. And if you were to look at it in detail, you would see that pretty much every little thing matches. Like you see this M right here. There's an M right here. So it is the Wikipedia views are coming directly from his page to my page because it's matching it almost like a signature, you know, as, as good as you can. But this little thing I want to point over here out to you, what do you think this is? Look at that dip. What is that? Someone removed the link to your name? Somebody went in and removed the criticism section off the Tyler Henry page. Very good. So they completely removed the, the whole criticism section and said, oh, no, we can't have this now. That's criticism. And um, I noticed, or somebody noticed, and we said, oh, no. Uh, this is all by the book. It belongs on the Wikipedia page. So it got back, added back in. See that? The other thing I probably should mention too, oops, sorry, sorry, don't look at those slides, don't look at them. Okay, I'm almost done, you guys, so I hope you have some questions. I just want to show you one more thing. Also in that second section over here, this part, we added my name to the lead. That was another reason why that probably dropped, because we went in and added, or somebody added, Susan Gerbic has said this, this person is a grief vampire. So this is another really important reason why the people who are in our community who are doing the work, the activism, the writing, the, the speaking to the public, they have to have strong Wikipedia pages. Because when they have a strong, good, healthy Wikipedia page, it's respectable, so they can click on it and they don't get a little stub, you know, a crappy looking thing with no photo on it or whatever. When they have that strong Wikipedia page, it makes everything they do that much more. So it, and this is kind of an example of that. Okay, so let me go over here to these last couple slides and give you a couple more numbers really quick. So I, I talked to a few of the people who wrote uh, Wikipedia, I mean the, the articles from us, 
uh, Sharon Hill, him at Meta, and Brian Dunning. And I asked him what were your page views for your what you uh, the articles you wrote, and combined they were at 128,000 views. So they were getting views. Um, I I don't think that's skeptics, to be honest with you. Even if you divided that by three, I think it is reaching outside the choir to some extent. So somebody's reading these articles, whether they're looking at the Wikipedia page and then they're looking at the citations and reading them. But that's not as much as a Wikipedia page could do. Because remember, you gotta draw, divide that by three, pretty much, these are three people's uh, numbers. But um, Tyler Henry's one Wikipedia page has already hit 700 and something thousand, and the articles we wrote maybe are hitting 40,000, 50,000 views. So the power, again, is really on the Wikipedia page. <clears throat> and then, I thought this was kind of fun, I'm throwing this in here. The, the, this is the history section. Everybody can see the history section of a Wikipedia page. It's just, you hit history. It's a tab at the top that says history. You hit that. And this is what a person wrote who removed my, um, my um, uh, the criticism section. He says, this is criticism from a non-accredited critic who simply uses Wikipedia as weapons, so I removed it. <laughs> Not a credited critic. Well, we want critics on, on Wikipedia. It's we add criticism to our Wikipedia pages that we write. So when we write Wikipedia pages for people, if there is notable, um, not personal, um, legitimate criticism, it's going on the Wikipedia page. That's a GSOW standard that we always use. Because also, um, if, if we don't put it on there, somebody else is going to put it on there. So let, let us do it in a way that is not personal, it's not an attack. And if it's somebody in our community, if we can add their, their um, what's it called, their, you know, re response, yeah. What would you say? Rebuttal. Rebuttal, yeah. If we could add that, if, it's, if it fits, let's do it. Because we have to abide by all the rules of Wikipedia, and I, and as I said, the edits up here at the top, everything that we edit is, is anybody can see it, if somebody would take time to do it. But I'm gonna add this last little bit. So this is what he wrote, and then he added this. Please ban Susan Griffith from Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> not likely, not, it's not gonna happen. Even if I was banned, I've, I've already trained a few hundred people. So, uh, sorry guys. So that's the, that's my story about Tyler Henry, and um, I and Operation Tater Tot. We come up with really ridiculous names. Well, I come up with really ridiculous names, and nobody ever challenges me on it. They just go, oh, "Okay, Operation Tater Tot. Okay, Operation Bumblebee. Operation Ice Cream Cone." But I'm kind of trying to do it to attract attention to the media and to help it make people remember. And people go, "That is so ridiculous. I have to go look that up and see what that is." So I hope that you'll look up the other operations I've done and kind of read about it, and I'll be happy to explain them to you, but they are kind of detailed, and I get all into it because they're good stories about grief vampires, and and um, and so on. I'm going to tell one really tiny, quick story about Operation Bubble Bee, because I, I think I was telling Mark, was I telling you about this? I was telling somebody, they said, make sure you mention this. Um, what the harm is, with Operation Bubble Bee, we... We're trying to force a hot read using Facebook, and um, we used double blinds so that we, the people who attended his his um, conference, his um, his his show, uh, didn't know what was on the Wikipedia, I mean the Facebook pages. So we, uh, I put out a call on Facebook. I said I'm going to do a psychic thing. I need money, and I need a lot of it. And within 24 hours, I raised almost $2,000. And I was able to um, pay for, I think there was 10 of us, something like that, to go to his, comp his, his shows, one in LA and one in San Jose, which is more where I'm at. And we were able to sit in the front rows like you guys. Because if skeptics go to events, they sit way back there. They want to pay 25 bucks. So we were paying $160, and we got a lanyard like you guys have, and that included a photo with, with, the, with the psychic. And um, I'll show you the picture, it's beautiful. And I went and caught, I went just totally out there with bright colors, and oops, and all these things. So there were three of us that attended as sitting in the second row, because the first row is for his truest fans, the people who he's already read for. And um, so he's able to pull up stuff and say, hey, you know, and it's like, they're like, oh, yes, Jeff, yes, yes. And it's like, well, you read, you know, 
you, you know him. So it's not that hard to get it out of there. So that we're like in the second row, and we, anyway, you'll read about it. But the, um, he, there was three of us, like, it was like, like, you three. And we're sitting there crying with our Kleenex and talking to old pictures of our children that are dead that weren't there. And Sterling is, I had his photo and he's in the back of the room. <laughs> and I'm so you know, oh my God, now I'm watching. Anyway, so it's great to call on us because we were colorful. And he called us one after another. And then there was a woman, maybe two seats back, right where you are. And he and she called it right behind Loretta. And so he, he said, I'm gonna come to you later. It was a young woman. She was like 25. And, and he called on us. And and we were supposed to stay to get our picture taken, and then we were gonna have a break, and then we we're gonna go come back and he was gonna show a ghost hunting thing with the dowsing rods like Richard has, you know, and and, and then they have like a little a receiver that has the batteries are loose in it. So if you shake it like this and the lights flicker a little bit, it's just a coat, you know, it's like, uh. And they're all down, he's like, oh, oh, Jim, that's amazing. So, um, so we were supposed to stay for the ghost hunting part, and we're sitting here like you three, and I bend down like this under the chair so they can, and they all bend down, we're all like, I am not staying any longer. I think I'm going to throw all that. Oh, Jim, you're awesome. So um, we could not expose him because obviously that wasn't going to work. Besides, we couldn't expose him or do anything of the sort at that time because we didn't know what was on the Facebook pages. So we didn't know if he hot read us because we weren't privy to what was on those Facebook pages. Like I said, you have to read it. So the woman that's back, like where you are, right there, right there, right there, right there. So he said, he said, I'm going to get to you. And he gets to her and she starts bawling. And he says, I'm, so, I'm going to tell you this. This is going to really piss you off. So he tells her, are you here because you lost someone close to you? I'm getting a young man. She's bawling and she's hanging on to her mom next to her. And she says, my fiance. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. And he's um, died of, from um, suicide, illness, or accident. <laughs> and we're thinking, what's left? <laughs> Murder, I guess, you know? What else is left, you know? So she's like, yes, he was killed in a car accident. Wow. And it was a Thursday. This is happening. He had died on Sunday. He hadn't even really been buried, you know. Maybe he'd maybe been buried, but she's bawling. I'm thinking, bastard, you know. I mean, come on. He's playing on her emotions. They're making a lot of money off of you guys, right? You're, well, not you, but the audience. They're making $160 for everybody in the front, and then $100 in the middle, and then, you know, $60 in the back. But they're trying to do is they're trying to get the, the um, bookings. Because the private private readings are 300, 600, 800. You can even bump it up if you have an emergency, which is what I told them I had. Um, you know, can I, am I going to be able to pay more to be able to get my reading from you? <laughs> to get it heard because I really need to talk to Matthew. Oh, yes, we'll be able to do that for you, no problem. You know, we'll move you up in the line. It's a year waiting list, but we'll move you up. Oh, please, I don't have a problem with that. Who do I make the check to? No, but, uh, <laughs> oh, sure, we'll take care of that. So he tells her that, and then he says, I'm getting in the back of the, way in the back of the room, a man who's tall with dark hair. Sad. That's him. She's like, oh, he was short. <laughs> <laughs> and he had, maybe he's bald or something. And he goes, that's how he wanted to appear. <laughs> I think we're going to need to do a private reading because he's coming in kind of faint. <laughs> yes, yes, you know, and, and uh, the audience is crying, and we're like really ready to bark. It's horrible. And so she's in the back. He's, he's giving her, and he says, "He's just a, that's how he wanted to appear in life to be taller." <laughs> and then he tried the electric stuff. He's like, "Have you have you had your phone like do something or your TV set do this?" That's him trying to, or the phone rings and it's not anybody there. That's him. He's trying to get a hold of you. He says he loves you very, very much and he wishes he hadn't had to leave you. And, and like I said, there's not a dry tear in the audience except for us. And we're trying to pretend, you know, with our Kleenex we brought. So 
that's the kind of thing that we're fighting against. That's the kind of thing that I, that's why I call them a grief vampire, because they're sucking the, you know, all that out of you. That's, that's, you're messing with her memory. That ain't right. Especially, you just died, you know, and she's 20-something years old, and what the heck are you doing here? And this is going to follow her the rest of her life, and she's going to be this, oh, you know, how is she going to have, she's, he says she's watching over you. He sees you all the time. How is she going to have relationships with other men in the future? I mean, seriously. I mean, it just boggles my mind. He's effing up with her life. You know, I keep pointing to you, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But that's, that's where it would be. If I was chip coffee, um, that would be where I'd say, he's messing with her life. For, for she's not going to be able to move on. She's not going to be able to have relationships. She's going to think that this every time her phone does some kind of weird thing, the guy's watching her. How is she going to have like sexual relationships with anybody else when she thinks the guy's watching her? I mean, ugh, it just makes me so mad. So I have a few minutes. Um, and like I said, I will be happy, 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 happy to give you details, but is there any questions? Just to silence. What happened? With what? Well, after you did the, the reading. After, after the uh, Operation Bumblebee? Yes. Oh, Operation Bumblebee or Tater Tot? Bumblebee's the chip coffee one where we went to the sh actually physically show. This is a phone reading that was a double blind Facebook, and then this is Tater Tot is the one I just gave you. So Operation Bumblebee? What was the end result? With okay, well, we got our picture taken with them. I can show you. It's beautiful. And we all got our photos taken with them. And then our articles, I wrote an article for Skeptical Inquirer, and I wrote a blog first. And then Skeptical Inquirer said, Susan, write this up for us. You know, so I rewrote it. And um, it went out into the media. I mean, you know, as best you can. And we tried to, we had this, we had this reporter who was interested if we could have caught him in a hot read. He writes for the New York Times. And he was interested in doing an expose on it. But we couldn't catch him in a hot read. We didn't catch him. He's a cold reader, just like I'm doing right now. But we did get a hot read of sorts, but I didn't have it on mic. And what it was is I had gone up to his manager and during the break, and I had said what I said about being able to be moved up in the list if he could reach out to my, my dead child, Matthew, who was three when he died. I was giving as much information as I could. And he, I said, will he be able to reach Matthew? Because he couldn't communicate. Um, he, you know, he wasn't talking that much. And he says, oh, I've seen him reach stillborn babies. <laughs> <laughs> really? Then he'll be able to reach my Matthew. So he cold read us. Everything that he said to us um, was what he pulled from either um, me talking to the manager or to what we had said, we talked to everybody in the audience around us. We told them who we were trying to get a hold of. We went to the bathroom repeatedly and told everybody in line how excited we were to be there. And, oh my gosh, I'm hoping he's going to be able to reach my son Matthew, who was three when he died. You know, So we gave him all the information we possibly could. He totally, totally fell for every bit of it. But it wasn't a hot read. It was, It's sort of a hot read, but it wasn't what we were looking for, which was that he was reading the Facebook pages where we put all the specific information that we didn't give him in the audience. It was something different. And he didn't read that. Even though we kept tagging his, his, um, his site, his, um, and we put up fake, they were fake pages. They were not Susan Gerbic pages. These were pages that were Facebook pages created months ago um, and run by people that all over the world were running these pages, Facebook pages, we put in the pictures of our cats, that we didn't have. We were putting up pictures of, you know, Deepak Chopra quotes. We were putting up pictures of, we were talking about how we were going to go have pizza, and we tagged some place in whatever city we were fictitiously in. So we created whole, whole personalities of Facebook pages that were not tied to skeptics at all. And those were locked down so nobody could see them, and we were friending people and things. You know, so we were trying to control for nobody else being able to get the information, and then we were tagging Chip Coffee. I'm going to go to the Chip Ta Coffee book show. You know how you tag them. And so that hopefully the Chip Coffee show would be able to say, hey, look at these notifications from these people who have who are going to be attending the Thursday night show, and look, they're trying to reach a person, specifically this person, and then the people who attended that show didn't know who were on that Facebook page. Do you guys get that? I'm kind of... It's kind of confusing because it's we're trying to blind it, blind it, so that he couldn't read the minds of the people attending the show. He couldn't say, "Oh, well, they know that they're fake." So in the end, is that we put out this blog, and then I put out the skeptical inquirer article, and then 
Uh, the paranormal community, one of his friends got really upset and wrote this really nasty blog about this, how awful these skeptics are. The, I know there are fake psychics out there, but Chip Coffey's my friend, and he wouldn't do that. He's been doing this for 30 years, and he's this really awesome person. Those people are mean. How could they dare put this kind of thing out about my friend? And then Chip Coffey wrote a blog, and he said that, because um, he said that he knew all along that we were skeptics, and he played along with it. So that's the only out he had. He said, I just faked it. And he, he says, if any skeptic show up in the future to any of my events, I will do the exact same thing and just play along. I'll put it there. I'll get you. And he says, I'll play along so that you won't know the difference because I knew they were skeptics all along. It's like, bullshit. He said, and he says, oh, thank you for the, I think we gave him four, uh, a couple thousand dollars. He says, thank you for that. I was able to buy a refrigerator. Something like that. And I'm thinking I want to send him a photo of him and I together and put it on a magnet and send it and he can put it on his fucking refrigerator. <laughs> Every time he opens his refrigerator, you'll see the picture of him and I together. And he's holding my purse. He's like, oh, this is great. You know, I'm like, oh, this is so awesome. So he didn't know we were skeptics, but that's all he could say. And so he hasn't come back to California. It's been two or three years. He hasn't come back to our venues again. We don't, because he knows that we're organized and that we're there. That might be the reason. It might be, who knows, that his, his uh, room size is dwindling. Yes? Um, a lot of websites nowadays, you want to go into them and ask, so you can log in, username, or whatever, and also by Facebook, and many, like Ticketek and many other places that you buy tickets for concerts, etc. you log in by Facebook, mm -hmm. and then you get a lot of the seat. So a lot of these um, readers can quite easily see who is sitting if they've logged in on Facebook right. to buy the seats, who is sitting where? And their Facebook page. page. Exactly. Facebook page can directly link into it. So I'm sure now, nowadays they'll be getting a lot more hits when people are too lazy to log in with their usernames and just use their yes, Facebook Yes, exactly. She's 100% right. This, we know Teresa Caputo does this, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> Uh, we know that she does this. A friend of ours went to, uh, was hired by uh, Inside Edition, which is a TV show that's kind of one of the best in America for skeptical stuff. And he was flown to front seat with uh, Teresa Caputo, the Long Island Medium, a few years ago. And one of the people she called on, she said something like, uh, I'm seeing pictures, uh, I'm seeing these, I'm seeing baby clothes. I'm seeing a lot of baby clothes. And the lady goes, oh. I just put a pictures on Facebook of baby clothes. I'm, yeah. And she's like, oh. And my, the guy who's in on it with us, he's like nudging the reporter that was with the book. Did you hear that? But they can't record anything. And the other thing he pointed out, too, at the Teresa Caputo show, you've got an audience of hundreds of people. All you need is a few of those Facebook pages just to get some live hits. Find a fireman or something like that. You know, something just kind of like a good story. And you just have to find a two or three. So we could, we were hoping to do hot reads that way too, but you'd have to buy an audience. And you can't record it, so what are you gonna do? You can't, if you make audio, you can't release it because you have to sign these things saying, I can't do that. So there was a lot of problems. But one of the things he did notice is, this is great, they have these sections, right? It's a stadium seating, it's all these sections. And he noticed that the camera crew and the sound people would move to a section before she went to it. So who's the psychic? The sound crew, right? So she was going to, yeah, there you go. And so she, so he noticed that, but again, of course, you can't record it, but he, he, you know, he thought this through. He said, wow, check it out. So she's talking to this audience over here on this side, and then he could see the boom people, you know, with the big arm going over to this other section over here, and they're lowering over kind of where these people are going to be and where the camera's going to be. And when she's done talking to this section, she goes, I'm getting a fireman over here in this area. They're already set up. So what does that tell you? Hot read, right? She knows where she's going to go. Either she knows the person in the audience, or she's seen their Facebook page, or they have um, heard them in the audience talking about something. We can't prove it because it's not there. And one more with Teresa Caputo that's really good. This is another one that I've seen. Is that uh, there's a cameraman. Again, these people, you know, uh, you know, you can throw out as much evidence as possible. The true believers aren't going to believe it. Um, so the cameraman is filming, she's doing a shoot, she's getting her hair done. Do you guys know who Teresa Caputo is, the Long Island Medium? Oh, lucky you guys. So she's kind of faded now, but she's getting her hair done. She's like a big name in America, big nails, crystal shoes, $1,000 shoes. 
and so she, glass shoes or whatever. So she's really just very feminine. That's the new wave. Is this um, boy next door, girl next door kind of look? The fuzzy sweaters, uh, it's like like the Tyler Henry, you know, with puppies, not like the raw like John Edwards and the Sylvia Brown, you know. But so um, he tells the cameraman's filming her while she's getting her hair done, and she's reading the cameraman. She's going and she's talking about how she sees this, and she's getting this uh, date, um, May 25th, um, 1990, and uh, I'm getting the initials J.R. The guy's like, whoa, what, what? But what's happening is, you can see this video, the guy's filming her, right, getting her makeup on. There's another camera right here that is filming that cameraman and her. And what you can see on the guy who's being read is a tattoo right here with a date and initials on it. <laughs> same date, same initials. What do you think? You know? So this cameraman sees this cameraman and, and, and nobody caught it until some this guy named Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow? No, that's that football player, right? Some other guy who's really into Teresa Caputo who's been doing a lot, he did a video on showing that she's hot reading him. But you can't prove it because how do you prove that she didn't just, it's more likely that he, she saw the tattoo. But you can't prove it because the guy is, you know, he's thinking of that date and that it is an important person to him, right? So unless you want to put on a fake tattoo and with made up, and you don't even see it, like you don't know what it says, like maybe over her shoulder you can't see it, and you put a fake tattoo with a fake date. Well, that's a good one. Who wants to take it on? <laughs> Get a tattoo, put it on your shoulder, you know, wear a halter top. This is RIP, you know, mom or whatever, and put a date. And so, you know, Matthew who died at three, or I don't know, something like that. And then you go to a show, and then you're like, oh, ah, 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 you know, doing your thing, and you don't know what's written on your back, and then, so he can't read your mind. And then they read you. I guess somebody would say, somebody told you, you know, how do you do it? So, so any other questions? I guess, because we're going to move on, we have another awesome um, interview. I mean, a uh, lecture. Oh, yes, go ahead. What would you have done if he uh, spotted you in the audience and say, oh, this is the skeptic who's been writing about me? Well, I hadn't written about him at that point. Uh, so, we had been, well, I hadn't, but somebody else in our group had, who didn't attend had been thrown out of one of his shows for making a, a stink. He was handing out um, like um, cold reading things in the audience, and they threw him out. So if they'd done it, I guess I would have just politely walked out. Because what are you going to do? You can't go after the believers. Okay, that's it. Ta-da!